Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Aaliyah and this is the Wigger Library. Very excited to have you here. Today I'm just going to be answering some questions that are a part of the Reader Problems book tag. And I found this book tag through a creator I will link below and I'm really excited to just drink my coffee, which I have right here with me. My little The Night Circus coffee mug. Very in love with this thing. And I will just answer some questions. So the first question on this list, this tag, is a hypothetical. And it's, you have 20,000 books on your TBR. How do you decide what to read next? Now, I don't have 20,000 books on my TBR, but I do have a good amount, as I'm sure many people do. My physical TBR is smaller, but still rather large, considering me and that I don't buy many books. But I pick books that I want to read next by my mood. So I like to think of what books I want to read in a month, and that's how I make my monthly TBRs and I usually stick to those pretty well but I kind of just go off vibe <laughs> so I don't really stress myself out too much anymore about picking books that everyone else is reading or that are popular or that I bought most recently I just kind of go off of what I think I will enjoy the most and I go from there I am fantastic I'm making coffee. It is a skill of mine and I just had to flex that real quick. But the next question is you're halfway through a book and you're not loving it. Do you quit or are you committed? Commitment? Me? No. So I quit. I will drop a book in a second if I'm not enjoying it. I very rarely hate read books. Um, it's just not for me. If I'm not loving a book, I just I don't want to read it anymore and I won't because I read for myself so there's no other real reason unless I'm forced or I have no other options of books to read I'm gonna drop it and I'm going to move on with my life and thrive. The next question is another hypothetical and that is the end of the year is coming close and you're behind on your reading goal do you try to catch up? And if so, how do you do that? So I cheat. I simply cheat. I don't really use a reading goal seriously and I usually put it rather low so that it's just kind of a, a marker rather than an actual goal because I have realized in the past when I set my goal high and I don't cheat and when I say I cheat I mean I just lower the goal so that I can meet it. <laughs> and if I didn't do that, I would stress myself out and I would start reading books quickly and just to finish them. And I don't personally believe that that's a great way to read books or at least enjoy the books that you read. So yeah, I just cheat or I don't make a goal. The next question is one that is close to my heart because it's a problem that I face all the time. And that is the covers of a series you love do not match. How do you cope? Short answer is I don't cope. I get very sad. And a great example of this is the Poppy War trilogy. And I've read the first book and I read it in hardcover. And I don't really enjoy reading hardcover books. It's just heavier and clunkier but I did annotate it so I don't want to get rid of it but I have the Dragon Republic which is the second book in that series in paperback and so they clearly do not match um, and that's a problem for future me to figure out right now I'm going to ignore it and move on with my life <laughs> but the short answer is I don't cope and I just try not to let that happen especially if I'm going to own the books if I don't own them then it doesn't really matter to me the next question is, everyone and their mother loves a book you really don't like. That has happened very often before. Who do you bond with over your shared feelings? And I'm assuming that this is shared feelings of like hatred <laughs> towards a book that I don't like, but everyone else seems to. And I have like 
two people who I would bond with. Um, the first one is my close friend Julia. I share many book tastes with them and if I hate something they'll probably hate it and if they hate something I will most definitely hate it as well. So we'll probably share over our love to be a hater. <laughs> so there's that person. And the second person is one of my roommates, Lauren. She and I don't share as many books in common, but we do share a general taste. Um, and we love to rant to each other about books we're reading, loving or hating. And so even if she read it and loved it, I still think she would hear me out if I just wanted to rant about it. <laughs> Question number six is an interesting one, and that is you're reading a book in public and you're about to cry, assumingly over the book. What do you do? What do you feel? And for me, I, I read a lot in public and I used to read a lot of sad books and I used to also read a lot of audiobooks on my commute to and from school. And so there were times when I would just want to start crying because of the book I was reading. And I don't, my, my, I don't feel embarrassed or anything, like, especially on public transportation, it, someone crying over a book is the least interesting thing going on on that train or on that bus. So that never really bothers me, but I usually will just stop reading and wait to read it somewhere else, mainly because I know that if I'm really invested enough to be crying, I will probably be missing my stop soon if I'm reading on transportation. So yeah, not too big of an issue for me. Question seven is a sequel of a book you loved is coming out and you don't remember the first book or the most recent book. What do you do? Do you reread it? Or do you reread the first book in the series or do you just go for it or do you find a summary somewhere. And for me, this depends. I don't really read a lot of series, mainly for this reason. I don't like waiting, but I did read Ninth House and I did enjoy it when I read it. I don't know if I'd enjoy it so much anymore, but I do plan on rereading Ninth House so that I can read Lee Bardugo's second installment, Hellbent. So I guess I do reread the book, especially if I liked the series enough. Like, I, I, I enjoy rereading books anyway, so it just makes sense. Question number eight is, you do not want anyone borrowing your books. How do you tell people no when they ask to borrow your books? And I don't really have an issue saying no to people in general. Like, that was a skill I had to learn over time, obviously, because saying no can be really hard and tricky. But especially when it comes to books, and I don't really lend out my books to just anyone. I mainly lend them out to close friends who I know will treat them with care, or my mom. <laughs> and I kind of just preface being like, hey, you know, don't thrash my book, please. <laughs> I really enjoy this, and I'm trusting you with it. And if I don't want them to borrow it and they ask, I'll just say no. I'm just like, mm no thanks um i'd rather not <laughs> the next question is how do you get over a reading slump now this is a good one because i have faced my fair share of reading slumps in my life and they suck okay they do suck especially if you really love to read and then suddenly you can't pick up anything you enjoy or anything you even want to read or you're just not in the mood but what i have learned about myself anyway this can't be for everyone, but for me, I just listen to myself. I know that sounds so cliche and so unhelpful, but when I, what I mean when I say that is that if I don't want to read, I don't read. <laughs> I It can be hard because reading and things with books is like my main interest and my main personality trait. So it's a bit of a crisis when I don't want to do the thing that I do the most. But for me, if I don't want to read, I just don't. And I just trust that eventually there will be a book that piques my interest again, I'll want to read again, and 
yeah, I just listen. Um, sometimes I'll find shorter books. I will go maybe to audiobooks. Audiobooks have gotten me out of slumps many times before because sometimes just the physical act of reading a physical book is just so unappealing to me. But listening to a book and a story and a world and learning new characters and uh, that appeals to me a lot more. So my best piece of advice is listen to yourself and if you don't want to do that and you just want to force yourself i would recommend trying audiobooks if you are able to or if you haven't tried it before maybe look up audiobook recommendations because it's a whole different heart <laughs> and there are bad audiobooks or poorly recorded ones but there are fantastic productions of audiobooks so just look into those if you're kind of going through it. Question number 10 is how many books that come out that you find really interesting do you actually buy? So new releases for me are interesting because I do try really hard to use my library and to use library apps and spend less <laughs> on books and right now I'm on a like partial book buying ban just because it's gotten to a level where it's like I have so many books that I own and haven't read so why do I need to buy more but I do buy new releases every now and again I try to buy them at two main times of the year and that's my birthday and Christmas because I'm getting a lot of generous gifts and usually other book lovers might relate to this but a easy easy gift for someone you know who loves reading is like a gift card or asking what books they're really into and that's usually when I pick up new releases. The final question is how many unread books sit on your shelves and for how long? So when you buy books and like do they just sit and do they weep and do they cry and do they remain unread for a long period of time? And the answer is yes, they do. But I'm trying to be better, okay? I'm trying to be better. <laughs> um, I have, I'll move the camera so you could possibly see, but that whole shelf over there is my physical TBR. And I understand that there are plenty of people who have larger TBR shelves and more books, but for me, that is excessive. That is a lot. And it actually stresses me out because I feel guilty, which doesn't make sense because I bought them with my own money. But anyway, that is why I'm on a book buying ban. So there are some books on there that I think there's none that I've had for too long. Definitely only like a year or two. Um, but yeah, they don't sit too, too long, but they sit too long for my liking because I am a mood reader at heart. And sometimes I'll buy a book knowing I'm gonna love it, knowing I'm gonna read it one day and absolutely fucking devour it, but just not be in the mood for it when I buy it, you know? So I'm learning, I'm trying to be better, but yeah, that's why I'm on a book buying ban is because it's gotten to a point where I'm like, Aaliyah, be so serious right now. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, it was rather small and simple, but I like tags. They're a fun time. And I'm curious if anyone has any video ideas for me or things they want to see me do, tags, video ideas, vlogs, anything, pitch them to me. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to be making videos again. And if you enjoyed this one, feel free to subscribe, like, and comment, and all those fun little YouTuber things. But yeah, until next time.